Target here. All right, guys, so let's get cooking here. I'm going to do a tomato concasse. C-O-N-C-A-S-S-E. Sometimes it ends it. I see it with two E's on the end sometimes. And there's a line over one of those vowels. I don't know what that's called. Tomato concasse, okay? It's a coarsely chopped, quickly cooked tomato sauce. So it's not like your marinara that's a pureed product that's cooked for, for a long period of time. But the tomato concasse, we're literally going to throw together in about a minute. But just for the sake of her footage, I'm going to talk for a couple minutes. Uh, yeah, we do. Brian's got some. I can't just do a one minute demo, right? Well, come on, man. We want to eat. Okay. I have. You want entertainment? You're good. All right. All right. This is squid ink pasta. It's actually not. What does that say? Does that say linguine? I'm sorry. I didn't know how to spell fettuccine. It's actually a fettuccine. So this is squid ink pasta. What the heck is that? What is squid ink pasta? You know the squid has a defensive mechanism. It has an ink sac where it, it uh, when it needs to flee a predator, it puts out a cloud, right? And then it escapes, right? Anyways, when they harvest the calamari, they also take out that ink sac, and it's actually mixed in with this pasta. So this is squid ink pasta. It's a black lingua. You have something to say, mister? No? Okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> he was, he, he, earlier he said, I, you can't, I don't know. How did I describe it earlier? You don't want me to repeat it? Okay, all right. <laughs> Anyway, so this is squid and pasta. It tastes like ordinary pasta, okay? So it doesn't taste like calamari or fish, okay? But it's kind of cool, huh? Now this is, it presents really nicely on a black plate with the color, right? So you're gonna see this all come together. So anyways, I cooked the pasta ahead of time because I didn't think it would make for too exciting a demo if we just watched the water boil, right? Uh -huh. But I cook it in salted water. You don't need to oil your pasta water. If you find that you have to do that, it's because you're probably crowding the pot too much pasta. You have one opportunity to get flavor inside a dry pasta when you're cooking a dried pasta, and that's by salting the water. And then, as the pasta hydrates as it's cooking, it's taking on that salted water, so it makes your final seasoning very much easier. Because why? You've already kind of seasoned it, right? You've already salted your, your pasta. So again, this is squidding Linguini, right? Squid ink linguini, fettuccine, or sorry, no, it's fettuccine, right? Now I'm confusing myself. The sign says one thing, but I don't. Uh, I had Dean write linguini, but it's fettuccine. There you go. Okay. So there's our squid ink pasta. Did I cook it in oiled water? No. No. What did I add to the water? Oh. Very good. Why? Flavor. Flavor. Nice. You guys are good. Okay, I will give you a taste. Okay. So we're going to. How you doing? I don't know yet. <laughs> One in every crowd. If you're going to be negative, you're welcome to keep walking, all right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you like that? No. I figured if I can get rid of a few people, uh, offend people in the next 10 minutes, then the rest of you will get more to eat. All right. All we're going to do is saute some aromatics. We're going to saute some onions, some garlic. I'm going to throw the tomatoes in there just pretty much to warm them through. Go pull it from the heat, toss in some fresh herbs, season with salt and pepper, taste, adjust seasoning if needed, and then we're going to serve it up, okay? So you guys want to try it, right? Who wants to try it? And the rest of you that didn't raise your hand? Okay, again, the answer, this is the answer. Okay, again, who wants to try it? <sighs> you guys are a tough crowd. Nope, these are tomatoes. These are heirloom tomatoes, guys. Actually, you're being pretty darn well taken care of here today. Okay? Can you tell? Yeah, we have some yellows. We have some. Oh, I think there's a Cherokee purple in here, and I think there's some Romas. Okay, so I have three different kinds of tomatoes. Some of them are right here. Here's a Cherokee purple. Here's a Roma. This is probably a Cherokee purple that's not quite as ripe. These heirloom varieties are wonderful. Okay, now you'll never, you won't get these usually at the grocery store because these nice heirloom tomatoes are actually um, holdbacks from you know 100, 200 years ago. Okay, the tomatoes that are mass produced nowadays are bred for they're a hybrid that are bred for yield per acre and transportability and shelf life, and in many cases machine harvestable ability. Remember that. Ability, able to be machine harvested. Machine harvestability, is that right? Okay. I went to public school, sorry guys. Um, so, I'm sorry, all the teachers are leaving now. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to cut an onion. I'm determined to give you a couple minutes of culinary education before, before I cook this. It's only gonna take a minute to cook the sauce. 
Okay? And then we're just gonna, I'll dress the, uh, again, squid ink pasta. Okay? Where'd you get the squid ink? I got this probably at the co-op. You know, decent gourmet type stores. I don't know if it's ordin I don't know if it's available at the ordinary grocery store yet. Nowadays, this I think I had gone at the co-op. Is it what? in a liquid form? I'm sorry. Is it a liquid this form? is dried pasta. So with all the other dried pastas. I mean, on this the Again, the ink is mixed in with the pasta when they make it. Okay. So I didn't. I didn't have a little ink sac and the pasta and go like this. Okay. So it's squid ink pasta, the black ink is mixed in when the pasta is made. So it's purchased as squid ink fettuccine. Okay, cool. And all I did was I cooked it in what kind of water? Salted, Salted water. water. And did I cook it till it's soft and mushy or do I want a little texture still? Al dente, to the tooth. In other words, you have a little bit of resistance. So you don't cook it to baby food stage, okay? You don't cook it to mush, please. Okay. No, this is an onion. Black. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fettuccine denotes the shape, and so or size, the width. Linguine is more fine. It's about half to one third that width. Okay, guys, this is a sweet onion from right over here. I don't remember her name, or I'd have you wave to her. What was the flowers on table? Grace. 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 Wave, wave. Sweet onions from Grace, guys. You guys are gonna go see Grace, right? Okay, so when you cut the onion, if you're going to dice the onion, which I'm going to do here, don't cut it across the equator. Okay, cut it from North Pole to South Pole, which is what I've done here. I did trim a little bit off there and then take off the outer part. But I left the root end intact because I want it to hold together. It makes dicing the, the onion easier. So what we do to dice, to dice the onion, I mean, something so simple, sometimes a little tip can help you, right? You make a series of horizontal cuts and vertical cuts and then dice it. If you want to make a shortcut, don't make the horizontal cuts. You see, a lot of the work's already done for you and that it grows in rings, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these cuts, but I'm not cutting all the way through. I want the root end to hold this together still. So I make a series of horizontal cuts, a series of vertical cuts, and then dice the onion, okay? And if you want a finer dice, more yeah. fine dice, just simply make your cuts closer together. Now, if handling the knife, you if you approach this with trepidation, just simply forego the horizontal cuts. Okay? Make your vertical cuts and then dice. Okay? Cool? And be aware of where your fingers are, please. Okay? I don't want you to report next week, you know, minus one digit and say, well, but I cut the onion. Okay? So be aware of where your fingers are, please. And then once, once I get down here, I just do a quick dice on this last little bit, okay? Now there's a lot of tricks to prevent tearing up from the acids that are released as you cut these cell walls. Okay, I don't know, some people say burn a candle, hold your breath, stand on your head, whatever, I don't know, okay? But by knowing some proper technique, you can pretty much blaze through that relatively quickly, right? Cool. Can you tell us how to do that again? I forgot all You want me to show you how to do that again? Okay, I can do that. Here's an onion, okay? Now I'm not gonna cut it from and do I cut across North the equator? South. No. Where do North I cut? Pole. North, pole. North Pole to South Pole, right? There we go. North Pole to South Pole. I'm just taking about a third of the onion, okay? Because I don't want this being overpowered, right? I have about half a dozen tomatoes there. Okay. So there we go. Again, I'm going to make a series of cuts. Tell you what, let's forego. I'll do a shortcut, okay? I'm going to forego the horizontal cuts. I'll make vertical cuts, but do I go all the way to the end? No. Right. Why? Hold it together. Very good. You guys are good. All right. I'll let you taste it. It's cool. All right. All right. So you guys have yourself a decent chef's knife, right? All right. Nice handcrafted wood cutting board from the market here. No? All right. The correct answer was yes. Okay. I'll ask again next week. Okay. I'll ask again next week. All right, guys. So why don't we crank this pan up? Crank the heat up. Question so far. Now, could you do? Do you have to have squid ink pasta to do this sauce? No. No. Use whatever you want. I just think it presents beautifully. Okay. The contrast. So think about that when you're putting together a meal, a plate of food. Think about contrast, not just textural, and not just temperature. Temperature would be like a fresh fruit salsa chilled on top of a warm piece of grilled salmon. Okay. Temperature contrast. Cool with warm or hot. 
uh, crisp with something smooth and creamy. Okay, so think about contrast, but also think visually. Think about color contrast. So the fact that I have a white plate that's unadorned, and I'm going to have this black pasta with a very nice and colorful tomato sauce. Do we have contrast? Do we have something visually interesting? All right, guys, so we're going to get this pan nice and hot. I have olive oil somewhere. Here's some herb olive oil. This is some olive oil that I put in the blender with some fresh basil and fresh parsley. I use that as a drizzle on the plate for garnish. Here's extra virgin olive oil. We're going to get it very hot. That is purple basil and green basil, sweet basil, okay? This purple, this is parsley, this is my garlic, okay? So I have garlic and onion, I'm just gonna combine my aromatics. I have garlic and onion that are gonna go in the pan first, and then my diced, just coarsely chopped tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, are gonna go in there, we're gonna toss, toss, warm it through, kill the heat, season it with fresh herbs, salt and pepper, okay? So again, tomato concasse, is it a very nice, smooth, pureed tomato sauce? Or is it coarsely chopped? Is it cooked quickly or for a long period of time? Sure. Very quickly. Okay, tomato comes to say, right? So I want my pan nice and hot. We're going to add some of this sweet onion. This is the sweet onion right over there. I don't know, is it white or yellow? You tell me. Frankly, I don't care what kind of onion you use, but the nice sweet onion is available at the market. Why not? Why not use them? Okay, so I'm going to cook this for just about a minute. I'm just going to soften this. Once the tomato goes in the pan, I'm just pretty much going to warm it through. A few seconds. Okay? I just want these aromatics to start releasing their flavor. Plus, when you cook onion, it sweetens it up, right? Okay? But we're already getting a head start on that in that we're using the sweet onion. This is the squid ink pasta here. This I got from the co-op, or any gourmet store should have it. I think I got this at the co-op downtown. Okay. So again, I have high heat, relatively short period of time. What am I sauteing these onions and garlic in? Olive oil. Whoops, sorry. Slinging food at you, I'm sorry. That was your taste, by the way. Okay, all right, guys. Let me give that 20 seconds more. We're going to add our tomatoes. Okay. So what kind of produce do you like buying from the market here? All of it. All of it? Yeah. All right. I have pepper. I have salt. Starlight Herbs is a wonderful source for you. If you'd like, you could, if you'd like, you could throw some other things. I used these in my demo earlier. Earlier today I made, who was here earlier? For the earlier demo, very nice. You guys are good, I like it. <laughs> Every Saturday I do a demo at 10 and one at 12. Fresh herbs. A little salt. A little pepper. It is not, it's just hanging out. I cooked it about 10, about 10 minutes before you walked up. I hit it with olive oil after the fact to keep it loose and free so it wouldn't clump. Cool? Here we go. We're done. Now, was that pretty simple? Again, did we cook it for a prolonged period of time? No, it's going to retain this nice, wonderful freshness. Okay? And I do take good care of my cutting boards. I don't set hot pans right on them. So, here's our tomato concasse. Nice and colorful for you, right? Okay, I'm going to give it a taste, see where we stand. No double dippies in my kitchen, guys. I'm going to get a little piece of the red tomato, a little piece of yellow. Now, you could use a shallot if you like. All right. Now, I don't salt food to make it taste salty. Salt food to heighten other flavors, right? Uh, white pepper, sure. Use white or black, whatever you want. All right, very good. See how we have a lot of onion in there? Haven't cut that other piece, but it's fine. Sweet onion, so it's not going to be overpowering. Okay? You ever tried a canary? We're down here. 
Yeah, there's wonderful fresh tomatoes now ripening up, guys. Okay, so again, we have our squid ink pasta with tomato concasse. Wonderful fresh products here from the market. I'm gonna give one more taste, make sure this is where I need it to be. Doesn't that irk you when you see chefs tasting with their fingers? I don't know, it does me. <laughs> I'm sorry? Or the same fork. Oh yeah, there you go. Or taste on fork set on cutting board. Rookie move. Alright guys. Good for me. I might display something like this, like like so. Get the desired amount in the tongs with one one swoop. And then when you release, give it a twist. Give it a twist as you release. A little bit of concasse right up top. Again, tomato concasse is quickly cooked, coarsely chopped tomato sauce. Okay. Maybe a little. Herb oil. Again, this is basil and parsley that I whirled in a blender with some olive oil. Okay. A little fresh herbs, maybe. Can you buy those 40 just alone, or do you have to get You can buy these. Any store like Walmart or Target's going to have these. So, can you guys do this? Nothing difficult, right? Just. I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah, hold on. Here, rewind. Next week, Laura will have this on DVD for you. These are prior week's demonstrations. You'll see things on here if you want to get one from Laura for five bucks. Two 30 minute demos. So, yeah, I'll start over for you. I'm sorry? Five dollars for one disc. Again, an hour. Two 30 minute demos. So, you're going you're gonna to see Laura for those, okay? All right, guys. No, no, I want this one. That's yeah, after the demonstration in a couple minutes, see Laura for that. Okay. There you go. Okay, guys. So here is an idea how I might plate something like that. And the rest of it, I'll put it right here. How you might serve something like this family style. That's a great idea, actually. You are good. You're <laughs> sitting right in front of me and forgot. There you go. Very good. I knew I had in the audience for some reason. All right, so you guys like the market? Yeah, do you come every week? Whatever we can. Very good. Are you going to other markets in the valley also? No? We have to go. Can I just take it? He is good. All right, guys. Squidding pasta with tomato concasse. Why do they call it squidding pasta? Because it's colored with the, uh, with the ink sac. It comes from the squid. All right, guys. And then I might go something like, I don't know. <laughs> Why don't we hit this just with a little bit of herb oil like so. And I'll do a quick chop. Here we go. Quick chop. All right, can you guys do it? Yeah, you can do it. You can do it. You're so nice. Jeez, you are so good. There you go.